Hello traders and welcome back to another Sunday video where I go over trade setups and ideas for the week ahead as well as show you guys the trades that I am personally in. And this week is going to be one where we're going to really focus on a couple key things. Uh, first of all, before I jump into the NASDAQ and the dollar move that we had towards the end of the week on Friday, which was fascinating, we had some very, very powerful commitment of trader stuff data that we need to show off in this video. Uh, it's probably one of the most interesting commitment of traders data reports that I've ever seen. And so we'll get right back to that in just a moment. Um, but before I do, let me just show you guys where I'm at. Uh, this is not fun to show, but I'm going to show it because that is the purpose of my channel is to share my journey and to share my ups and downs. I'm currently going through a $30,000 drawdown right now. Uh, September has not been a very good month. August has not been a very good uh, month. But before that, we had a really good stretch. So I am kind of just giving back some of my gains right now. And, you know, I've had a couple uh, interesting questions to this. People saying, you know, Nick, what are you changing? What, 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 why are you off your game? Well, I'm doing the exact same stuff in these months that I was doing during my winning months. It's just something called variance. Just like if you had a perfect game of poker or blackjack, you're going to lose some hands anyways. Same thing in trading. Even if you have a great trading strategy that works well over time, you're still going to have times where it doesn't look so great. Anyways, that is where I'm at. I'm working through a drawdown. I'm very confident I'll be fine in the long run. It's just part of trading and I show it because again, I don't think a lot of people on YouTube and Instagram, they want to show that sort of stuff, but I know what you guys are feeling like because I, you know, I've, I've been trading myself. I know uh, drawdowns are tough and, and it's kind of frustrating when nobody on social media ever wants to talk about it. And it's like, how do you even learn if, if nobody ever shares their true experience? So I am working through a drawdown publicly, transparently, and uh, I'll get through it. Just take some time. Uh, sticking to the strategy. Anyways, guys, there's something fascinating that I want to show you about this move right here. This move may not seem too out of the ordinary. There's a pop up and then it's sold back off. This move was fascinating and let me show you why. If we take a look at the commitment of traders data from the Smart Money Tracker page on the Edge Finder, it reveals something pretty fascinating. So if you're newer to this uh, channel, then what you may be wondering is what is all this data? Well, here's the quick synopsis. The Smart Money Tracker lets us take a look at what institutional money is buying and selling and what their positions look like week to week. <clears throat> now, the reason that this is so powerful is that if you know that you know major hedge funds and uh, banks and things like that are buying or selling a particular asset, it can actually be useful to you to perhaps tag along with some of those great uh, professional traders out there, right? They typically are the ones with the most money in the markets. They can really move the markets and following their positions can be really powerful. So, for example, we have oil, US dollar, gold, which by the way, I'm still long oil. I'll tell you guys more about that in a bit. Euro, pound, these things are generally more on the uh, bullish side for the, uh, for the institutional money. On the flip side though, you have things like NZD, AUD, CAD, um, JPY, uh, and some of the, the NASDAQ, uh, et cetera. So these kind of things are more bearish. These things are generally more bullish, but this is their overall position on a longer term basis. If we scroll down here, this will show you the, no, the latest non-commercial uh, COT. That is, of course, hedge funds and banks, non-commercial. Um, what are they doing? Well, they are doing some fascinating stuff this past week. If we can direct our attention here to the right-hand side of the screen, we are going to get blown away by how powerful this data shows. So look at this. First of all, US dollar. Let's isolate this for a second. Overall, there was a massive net increase in the positioning swing by 16.45%. There was a decrease in the number of long contracts, so that doesn't really, it's not huge, but what is huge is look at this. Uh, the number of short contracts were uh, reduced by 10,000. So there was like almost 20,000 shorts last week. Now there's only 8,900. 8, a massive redu reduction on the short side shows a huge swing bullish for the US dollar. So this is incredibly interesting. We also have gold on here. Look at this, gold up, platinum up, uh, the Swiss franc was up. These are all risk off things, guys. The Japanese yen was up. These are all risk off assets and they're getting bought like crazy. Well, what about the risk on assets? What about the Dow? The Dow sold really hard. S&P sold really hard. The Australian dollar, the CAD, 
the New Zealand dollar, look at the New Zealand dollar, 12.6% swing. This commitment of traders data, guys, is incredibly powerful because when Frank and I saw this, we watched this number hit the edge finder at 3.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern yesterday. And I showed you this NASDAQ chart because look at what happened at 3.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern on Friday. The market saw this COT data and sold the NASDAQ down really, really quick. It is, this is a move, by the way. That's a 0.7% that's a move on a collection of stocks, a massive sell-off very, very quickly on a 15-minute chart. So the point is, COT data is really powerful, and I thought this was a great example of how I'm going to be going into the week. So how do I position myself? Well, I'm dollar bullish. I am indices bearish. I am... Um, Still in my oil trade. In fact, let me let me keep you guys up to date with the oil trade. Oil trade, I'm still in it, letting this thing run. And, you know, one of the big things that you should always remember about oil is that oil proceed uh, in preceding the last like several recessions going back to like the 80s. Uh, oil has a massive run up. It doubles before a recession. And oil has been really strong. And so a lot of people are saying, hey, you know what? This thing looks overbought. It's probably going to come back down. And while it may do that in the short term, Oil is in a runaway uptrend, and I'm trying to uh, take a calculated entry. So I, I bought oil last week inside of VIP. I shared that for members. If you're not a VIP member, by the way, there will be a link down below in the description. In case you have not seen the Discord, this is what it looks like. So you can see all the trades being shared, breakdowns, explanations, uh, my trades. We also have Frank tra uh, Frank's trades as well. He is uh, uh, you know, my, my co-trader inside of the group. Uh, we manage the trading rooms together. So if you would like that, uh, feel free to click the link down below in the description to sign up for that. There's also a Telegram channel down there that is free. So check out those resources in the description. And finally, I should mention this. If you guys want the Smart Money Tracker and you want all the powerful data that we have on the Edge Finder, you can also use the links down below in the description to get a subscriber discount off of our products. We're a software company out of Atlanta, Georgia, and by purchasing a copy, you're not only getting yourself some incredible data and tools, you're also supporting our team to continue building more of these things as there is a lot of operating costs to building software. So um, highly recommend if you would like a copy, pick it up today. There's a discount down below in the description to get access to the Smart Money Tracker data yourself. So you can click on anything you want, take your time with it, etc. So oil, I'm still bullish, uh, basically will be bullish unless we stop below the lows. Uh, other things to consider, you know, I mentioned, you know, indices. If you're looking at the indices, I personally think that a rally in indices, if it does happen, will likely be met with resistance. So my bias on, on indices this week would be, you know, set up your, your levels of resistance, uh, set up your levels of support, and be very careful if you are uh, bullish. Because again, um, you know, long term, of course, indices typically go up. But in the short term right now, there's a lot of headwind with what the Fed was saying, you know, about keeping rates basically higher for longer. What was called a hawkish hold from the Federal Reserve may continue to put pressure on indices and still be bullish for that good old dollar. Let's talk about the dollar here. Here's the dollar index on a four hour chart. And you can see we hit support and nailed it, flew off the highs, retested, found support again, found it at the same level. Buyers are strong here. And um, you know, my opinion would be this area should see continuation to the upside. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't, it may decide to retreat back down to this area again. Uh, that is also possible. Um, but again, I, I would say I'm generally bullish on the dollar. So what am I trading? Well, let's go look at the what the algorithm has got for us and we can pull it up. The top setups algorithm basically takes into account all of these different factors and punches out biases on various currency pairs um, commodities, assets, etc. So, you know, dollar yen is an example. Let's take a quick look at USDJPY. Dollar yen broke out of this resistance level. Notice if we look left, resistance became support, right? So if that price doubles back, that might be an entry. That might be an opportunity to look to go long, continue to trade that one. Euro USD, I happen to know, is also on the very strong short side. Look at this, minus 12s. This is the strongest reading that I have seen on the edge finder ever for pound dollar and euro dollar. Now, pound dollar and euro dollar have been shorts on the edge finder for weeks now. And if you've been catching these rides, and I just wanna say congrats. I know a lot of traders who use the edge finder have been selling these things and, and you know within their strategies. And 
it's been a it's been like cutting butter recently it's been very very smooth sailing for um euro pair uh euro and pound bears i'll show you guys this really quick because a lot of times people will say well you're like okay yeah but when did it start saying you know be bullish or be bearish well, i'll show you the edge finder has been bearish on the uh, as far back as august 25th the edge finder <clears throat> was pretty bearish on um uh, the euro, right? Same thing with the pound. This is the, by the way, this is just a way we explain or, or back test uh, the edge finder and it's a historical call outs. So another one, for example, could be pound USD. Let's take a look at the pound. You can see it's been bearish all the way back to August 25th and it's just been a beautiful sell off. Um, was it right the whole time? No, you can see there was one period of time where it was bearish and it went up for a little while, but for the most part, this thing has just been continuously staying bearish and that would have been just a big, big move to the downside. Really, really nice. Anyways, um, so for those two pairs, euro and pound, it's business as usual, right? If this thing sells, uh, if this thing makes moves up into levels of key resistance, my bias would be bearish. Now we are kind of sitting at a supportive level currently. So you kind of have this going on. So I'm probably not looking to short right at this level, uh, but You can see we have some resistance here, some resistance here. So possibly something that could be interesting for Euro bears would be waiting for kind of a retracement up into this area. Now that's a four hour chart, so that's a little bit higher time frame. This is scenario one. Scenario one is waiting for just the straight up pullback into resistance and then looking for sells. But scenario number two is more aggressive, but also can be a wonderful trading opportunity as well. In my past experience, I love these trades all day long. The break in the retest here on the Euro looks really attractive. So we have confirmation from the edge finder, which is of course what I use to help me find my trades. So I'm, I'm liking the edge finders bias, very strong sell bias on these currency pairs. And so we can either look for scenario one or two. And personally, I really like both, right? So. Both of those look interesting. Where it currently is sitting at support, I'm probably not too interested. Like we very well might bounce off this. So um, if we do bounce off it, like I said, retests could be more interesting. And if we do break through that, then sellers are kind of back in back in play. And I would say I'm looking for sells on that. So yeah, let's keep going. Let's take a look at that pound pair I mentioned. Look at this. I've got it all marked up from this week. Just a rinse to the downside for the pound. The pound got smothered on, on two fronts, really. On um, you know the central bank side, they had what is considered a dovish hold. Uh, so let me explain that really quick for fundamentalists in the room. Uh, the Fed had a what is considered a hawkish hold. And the BOE, the Bank of England, had what is considered a dovish hold. What are the difference? Well, as you can probably imagine in the letters here, a hawkish hold is basically the idea that we are we are going to hold interest rates here, but we plan on holding them here for a suspended period of time, and we're not afraid to raise rates again. That's the Fed stance. You listen to the Bank of England, though. The Bank of England says we're not going to raise rates today, um, and you know we think that there's some more disinflation that's going to come in and basically uh, sink the uh, sink the the um, sink prices further, and we probably won't need to raise rates. That's a dovish hold. Two very different narratives, and that divergence can clearly be seen on the pound USD. For anybody who thinks, oh, fundamentals don't matter, I'll just watch the technicals. This is a clear example. Fundamentals matter very strongly. Look at what fundamentals told you about this chart compared to the euro. The euro basically made its way back to lows and has kind of been bouncing around, but the pound with this news has cleanly broken through the lows and buyers are basically beaten here for now, right? The Fed is very strong and the Bank of England looks fragile, right? And so that difference is making the pound look incredibly weak compared to the US dollar, which looks really strong. So I like that trade a lot. Pullbacks on this one, 61.8. I would say this is worth a trade and opportunity in my view and in my trading. So I will be watching for this as well. Um, so again, know your fundamentals. I'm telling you, it is it is different. When you understand the fundamentals in the market, you will see things so much cleaner. And if you're somebody who doesn't know fundamentals, I do want to encourage you. <clears throat> the Edge Finder is built specifically to really scan for fundamentals. Um, 
you know, if you're somebody who watches gold, which by the way, has a very neutral reading this week, I will go over gold just to show you guys where I'm at, but the reading here is just all over the place, not very bullish, not very bearish, kind of just mixed. Um, you know, if we take a look at, for example, let's look at the, the major currency pairs for a second. This scanner, if you're somebody who is like, I, I wanna learn fundamentals, I want that clarity in the markets, consider picking up a copy of the Edge Finder for this purpose. The Edge Finder allows you to clearly see all of the different factors that we look at, which are a lot of core fundamental components. And it allows you to kind of understand it one piece at a time. So if we were looking, looking at COT data, you can kind of look at the COT data and you could say, well, what is this telling the edge finder? What's the algorithm pointing out? And if you're looking at retail sentiment, you could see, well, retail is not very short. They're really long. Oh, that's a bearish reading because they typically lose money, right? By watching these videos, by getting a copy of the edge finder, you will learn so much about market fundamentals that are moving the markets way more than what technical charts will tell you, right? Fundamentals, what I like about fundamentals is that fundamentals, they, in some ways, and in my opinion, are more leading than price action. Fundamentals are telling a story. And if you're listening to a story, think about this. If you're that kind of person that likes to like, um, you know, watch movies or shows, oftentimes the show is telling you a story. And during that story, as it's going along, we haven't gotten to what's going to happen over here, but you as a listener can kind of guess what is going to happen over here, right? So let's say this is the, the show timeline, right? You have all these clues, clues are being dropped. And you're like, we're only here. We haven't seen anything over here. I'm not sure, but I think there may be a murder that happens, or I think there may be somebody who leaves the picture or something like that. You know what I mean? With fundamentals, it's the same thing. We have stuff coming out, but there are clues all along the way of what may be coming down the pipeline. This Bank of England stuff is a great example. The Bank of England uh, has been very divergent or, or diverging from the Federal Reserve's really hawkish tone. And so if you knew that, if you picked up on that and understood that, like the Edge Finder has, right? The Edge Finders, the whole point of the Edge Finder is to help automate fundamentals. It, it has been calling for this for weeks, right? It's been, it's been reading the clues. It's been looking at the numbers. It's been, you know, we've, we've been very bearish on things against the dollar for a few weeks now. And if you've been bullish, bullish with us on the dollar, then congratulations. It's been a really good move on that side of things. For me, not so much because uh, the, the main account that I show you guys here, um, I am also trading some options on, which have been not going as well. I've also got, um, you know, some, some various other trades. The indices trades have turned around on me. So I am uh, no longer trading indices right now on the long side. I'm waiting for a breakout. Uh, I will say for, for those of you guys who uh, are watching the S&P 500, we ended the week at a really interesting level. But what's scary is that we closed just underneath this previous low. So where is that going to start us out this week? We'll see. Uh, again, I think it's a little too close to say like, oh yeah, we've completely broken out of support. But this sell-off was nasty. And with that COT data coming in strong, it does look like the commitment of traders data plus you know this, this downward pro uh, projection, the S&P looks, looks weak, looks scary, right? We rejected levels of support, I'm sorry, resistance. So my opinion on the indices right now is they look, they look ugly and until they start to show signs of strength again, I'm gonna wait to be, um, you know, trading them. Now, longer term positions, you know, options, things like that. I've been sold, selling some puts. That's where I'm, you know, not doing as hot as I've sold some puts on the Dow. Um, I've sold some puts on the, uh, this is a semiconductor ETF, which is, um, you know, another just ETF. So uh, the Russell as well, this one has been sinking for me. So I, th that's where a little bit of my drawdown has come from is from the indices, longer term swings that I'm playing through options, etc. Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. I do want to say, remember, if you want a copy of the Edge Finder or you would like access to our VIP community and get the trade alerts being shared by Frank and I, the links will be down below in the description. We'd love to have you in there, and I hope you have a wonderful trading week ahead.